East leading Atlanta Braves continue their special season with more late game magic yesterday in Phoenix. This time former Diamondback Ender Inciarte triggered an incredible Braves ninth inning power barrage. Swung on Belton, deep right center field, that ball is gone! <laughs> And Ender knew that was gone as soon as he hit it. As this ball's cracked deep to right field. Long home run for Lucas Duda. And Lucas Duda hits his first homer as a brave. I uh, love the smile. As this ball oh. is launched deep right field, it's going to be another home run. The Braves are pouring it on in the ninth inning. That was fun, and for the first time in nearly 20 years, the Braves hit three homers in the ninth to win this series at Arizona. And now Atlanta rides that momentum into San Francisco as this wild western road trip continues tonight against the Giants. From San Francisco, California, it's time for Braves baseball. One of Major League's most beautiful venues greets us. It's AT&T Park, where tonight the Braves, in first place, battle the San Francisco Giants in game one of a three-game series. Hi again, friends. Chip and Joe, welcome back to Braves baseball. A great road trip so far. Atlanta's just taken three out of four from the Arizona Diamondbacks. And cue up the Willie Nelson, uh, Joe. The Braves can't wait to be on the road again. And here we are facing the Giants. Yeah, you think about that uh, sweep by the Red Sox at home and how down and out the team was getting on the plane to come west. Well, they've taken care of business, winning three out of four in Arizona before coming here to San Francisco. But that's just kind of the tip of the iceberg with the Braves and their road work. 42 and 30, best record in the National League on the road. They lead the road, uh, lead in road average and also in slugging percentage. And also the pitchers, since August 1st, they have the best marks in Major League Baseball and ERA and opponents average on the road. Great work from both sides of the baseball, both the hitters and the pitchers doing the job. But a real challenge for the Braves tonight because they face the Giants for the second time this year. Remember, San Francisco gave the Braves all kinds of trouble at SunTrust Park. This would be a great place to avenge a three-game sweep here in the Giants' home park. No question about it. It was kind of disappointing. A little bit like that Boston sweep, a little bit like the Colorado sweep at home. Hard to figure, but the Giants came to SunTrust Park and did a number. And this season, yeah, it's been a little bit tough. National League ranks uh, 3.9 runs per game. They're down near the bottom on base percentage. And they've lost eight straight games, and they're not getting any offense at all generated. They've lost nine out of ten. No Buster Posey, no Andrew McCutcheon, who was traded to the Yankees. They're a little short-handed, but what they do have is a manager named Bruce Bochy who won't settle for anything but your la your best. And remember, they did come to Atlanta and beat the Braves three straight. And they've got a rookie starter named Derek Rodriguez, the son of Pudge Rodriguez, who's been maybe their best starter all year long. The Braves have been very resilient all season long. When we come Come back. Kelsey Winkert is with us. She'll talk about the Braves late inning magic. We've seen that on this road trip and we hope to see it again tonight.
the Georgia Lottery. Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome back into beautiful AT&T Park. The Braves coming off of a huge series win in Arizona, looking to keep that going here in San Francisco. And that was a big series for a lot of reasons. The first one being that the Diamondbacks are a good team. The second one being the obvious that the Braves were able to gain some ground in the NL East with that lead now up to four and a half games. The third reason being the way they were able to win every single one of those games. They seemingly came down to that last at bat. Very exciting. And that has been a common trend with this team, especially since Brian Snicker took over as the manager. Check out these numbers. 19 wins in their last at bat. That is tied for most in the National League. 239 runs have been scored from the seventh inning and on, and 56 last at bat wins with Brian Snicker at the helm. And it takes more than talent to be able to do that, but we'll let the guys tell you what they think that it factor is. No, never. I never did, and uh, what we did right now, we didn't give up. We keep you know, keep fighting for each other. Like I said, we, are, we play like we are like brothers, like a big family, and that's what we're doing. You know, they don't stop playing to, to the last out, and um, just, just the hustle. I mean, just Dansby, Ronald hustling, you know, first base, going to second base, uh, making making the blue pits, catching out. It's just, it's amazing what these guys can do, and um, it's just, uh, it's shocking <laughs> sometimes also, but it's, it's the best thing, and we got a great chemistry going. We're just going to keep rolling in all of September. No, this has been a lot of fun. This. Uh, I think we've shown everyone this year that it, it takes all 27 outs and you, I guess we never know or you never know if we're going to be out of it or not. To see us come back and win games like this, it's pretty impressive and it's been a lot of fun to be a part of and watch. The Braves are never out of a game until that final out is recorded. We'll see if they can keep that momentum going here and they can keep that losing streak alive over for the San Francisco Giants. We have game one coming your way here from beautiful AT&T Park. Sean Nuka minutes away from taking the mound. We have game one, Braves and Giants is next.
and by... San Francisco. Safe to say this is a refreshing night for the Braves who just endured four straight days of 100 plus degree temperatures down in Arizona and they came to San Francisco as hot as the weather in the desert winning three out of four games. So our checkers weather report beautiful weather expected all three days here in the city by the bay. Let's hope Joe Atlanta can't add to their win total looking for number 80 tonight. Pretty similar Toyota starting lineup for Brian Snitker tonight. It's Kurt Suzuki getting the assignment behind the plate. Ender hitting sixth, Ozzy seventh, and Derek Rodriguez, the son of Ivan Rodriguez, Hall of Fame catcher, is on the mound, and he has been a very pleasant find and surprise for San Francisco. Oh, Fran. has he ever? And they got him actually as a minor league free agent from the Twins organization. His last five starts, a sub two ERA, a 171 average. He's six and two overall for the year, and his ERA among pitchers with at least 90 innings pitched, fifth best in the National League. 26 years old. 6 1, 2 15, and started his pro career as an outfielder the first three years. So, our first look at Derek Rodriguez as Ronald Acuna Jr. leads off for Atlanta, and we are underway with a ground ball hit to the left side. Longoria fields the high hop and throws a strike for out number one. Sixty nine degrees at first pitch that temperature will tumble as the evening progresses as Johan Camargo bats after one pitch and one out. The Braves came to town flying high after that finale in Phoenix ball was flying out of that ballpark too. This is a much different ballpark where that's concerned. Camargo hit one of the three Braves ninth inning homers first time that's happened in roughly 20 years for the Braves. Camargo a two run shot. As a five game hitting streak and is up to 18 homers and 70 runs batted in. What a year for Camargo, who began the season, you recall, on the disabled list for the Braves. One ball, one strike. And that missed high. Ball two. Scouting report on Derek Rodriguez is that he's had very good command of all his pitches. Low 90s fastball, curve slider change. And use them at any count. That's fouled off the screen. Two balls and two strikes. Makes you wonder what the Twins didn't see. Yeah, they won a bunch of games last year at two <laughs> different levels. I think he won 10 games, went 10 and 6, something like that. And the Giants glad to have him as this one's popped up. On the left side, it'll be Longoria again. Plenty of room, two quick outs. So Freddie Freeman stands in the box for the first time. Freddie with 21 homers. One of them came against the Giants back in Atlanta. And Joe, we talked about it a lot in Phoenix. It looks like Freddie's beginning to come out of this uh, early September offensive slump. I said to him last night after the game, and there were, everybody was grinning from ear to ear after that win. None more so than this guy. And I said, well, it's official. You're back. And he started grinning again and I said well anytime you bend over and hook one to right field like you did your last time up that's official. And he said well Kevin and I Kevin Seitzer and I have been working on a couple of things to try to shorten me up and he said I think it's paying off. 
One ball one strike his first look at Derek Rodriguez who delivers and that just missed Mark Wegner has the plate for game one here in San Fran Jim Reynolds John Tumpane and Jeremy Rehack are the arbiters around first to third two on pitch is slapped toward left Pence on the run still chugging he can't get it it's out of his glove and up against the wall. Pence lost his hat. Freeman stands at second with two outs. Need any more proof? A couple of times Freddie's hit the ball with authority the other way on this road trip. And he got a sinker and smashed it to left and he stands there with two outs. Well let's hope they don't rule this one an error. It's what happened to him his first at bat in Arizona when one went off the glove of the left fielder. Michael Duca is the official scorer here. He's a good one. We'll see what his decision is in a moment. And it's ruled a base hit. A double for Freeman. And that brings up Nick Markakis. Nick has had a sizzling road trip. A lot of big hits, a lot of two out hits. And didn't get that one. Strike one. Nick is seven for 15 on the road trip. Had his six game hit streak interrupted in Arizona yesterday. But he has 11 hits in his last seven play. He too went through a slight offensive slide, but he's back. And didn't mean to swing, and that one fouled off the plate. What wind there is tonight in San Fran is blowing slightly out. Toward right center and straightaway center. But as the evening cools, it's a gigantic park. Center field 399 away from the plate. Biggest part is that triangle out in right center at 421. A little bit of a light crowd tonight. They were expecting perhaps their smallest crowd of the year for a lot of different reasons, but. Mostly that school's back in session here now. The Oakland Raiders are playing football across the bay tonight. And the team's on an eight game losing streak. And a swing and a miss retires Nick Markakis and Freddie Freeman's left standing at second in the opening inning. Sean Newcomb goes to work for Atlanta. No score at AT&T Park. First now Sean Newcomb goes to work against the slumping Giants who as Joe said have lost eight consecutive games time to get Sean going again. Yeah and we were talking about the Road Warriors for this ball club and how well they have played and pitched same goes for Sean Newcomb 14 road starts seven and three a three twelve ERA full run and a half better on the road great average against his four keys to pitching success tonight number one first pitch strikes. Sean when he starts a batter one and oh they have a 248 average and he's walked 57 
When he starts a batter 0 and 1, the average drops to 177 and only 16 walks on the year. And May, May when he went 5 and 0 with a 154 ERA. Let's see some more of that with fewer walks. Austin Slater will be the first giant to face him in the first inning. He's playing right field. And of the men in their starting lineup, as he delivers the first pitch strike, he's their hottest hitter. I'm going to give you fans at home some astounding offensive numbers up and down this lineup for San Francisco that will explain very clearly why they've lost eight straight games. Nobody right now is red hot in the lineup for San Francisco. So I would think Joe knowing that in this ballpark be aggressive be on the attack. Absolutely Chip. I was astounded when I saw those first pitch strike numbers today for Newcomb. He's got a good fastball used it there and missed one ball two strikes. For Slater. It was hit a home run he's knocked in 18. And a swing and a miss 95 mile an hour heat. That's what you like to see one up one down. As Brandon Belt is coming up he's the second place hitter for Bruce Boshi. his Toyota starting lineup is hitting 201 over their last 10 games. The Giants are six for the last 45 with runners in scoring position not at all what Bruce Boshi expected this year but in fairness to him you lose Posey you lose Sandoval Samarja Cueto and on and on. They haven't had a chance to put their team together for an extended period of time. They have not. They're 10th in the league in batting average, next to last in on base percentage and slugging, next to last in homers, 13th in runs scored. They're down at the bottom of the ladder. And to a certain degree, I think you can understand those offensive numbers because of their home park. In other words, they're the anti Colorado Rockies at Coors Field. This is a offense suppressing baseball field. I think it is from a home run standpoint chip. I agree with you. But it's also spacious. It can be chilly. You know it cannot it's not never gets real hot back today was a beautiful day one of the best they've had. I understand that part of it. But I've never thought of it as a. 100 percent pitchers ballpark no. just because it's big. Well, they have won 39 of 69 games at home. They have the Giants. It's a club that's eight under 500, so they've done their best work at home. The Braves have done their best work on the road. We'll see what gives in this three-game series. Like how Sean is throwing his fastball early. Brandon Belt, 14 homers. He's been battling a sore knee. He's in the midst of a 5 4 35 slide at the plate. And way outside, three balls, two strikes. Sean had a disappointing outing last time against the Red Sox. He only gave up three runs in four and a third innings, but he threw more balls than strikes in his 78 pitches total. With all due respect to San Francisco, this lineup is not the Boston Red Sox lineup. As Belt fouls one away, it's still three balls, two strikes. Line drive into left. That's going to get down for a base hit. Belt with an opposite field single, and he's aboard in front of Evan Longoria. Good at bat by Bell who fouled off a couple of tough pitches and fought that one off and dumped it into left. Hey, he gave up a base hit. He didn't walk him. Right. That, that's that's a good thing because he's walked 17 out of his last 29 innings and that has really hurt him. Here's Evan Longoria. Giants brought him over from Tampa Bay and Longoria's had a disappointing season. He missed a lot of time with a broken hand. But 15 homers, 49 runs batted in. The Giants were expecting 
a lot more power production out of Longoria in 2018. And ball one, strike one. Sean's thrown strike one to two of the first three hitters. I like it, Chip. I like the fastball. Like you said, he's using it more. Belt a short lead. Missed. Ball two. Remember when Sean nearly no hit the Dodgers, he threw 134 pitches. Over 100 of them were fastballs, and LA couldn't touch him. Also threw 23 changeups in that game. That was a deadly combination against the Dodgers. And this one's whacked on the ground to short. Second base one. Long throw off target and the swipe tag for Freeman. Couldn't get Longoria on the way by. So Dansby's throw wasn't as clean as Ozzy would have liked. They do get the force play at second, and the inning continues for Nick Hundley. Yeah, it made uh, Ozzy kind of twist a little bit towards center field. And then caused from there, trying to hurry his throw, pull Freddie off the bag. So no error on the play. You can't assume a double play. And Hundley will hit with two outs. He's the cleanup man. And is also in a big slide. Three hits in his last 21 trips to the plate. Very different looking Giants club, Joe, without Buster Posey in the lineup or behind the plate or at first base. Uh, and I keep looking for him. Yeah. Posey had hip surgery on August 27th to repair a torn labrum in his hip. A couple of big league players have had that surgery. Alex Rodriguez is one of them. And Devin Mezzarocco is another. Yeah, I don't know if Buster's here, if he's back in Georgia. If he is and watching tonight, we miss you. Hope you're on the mend. On ball one strike. And popped up Freddie Freeman in foul ground to the warning track will have some room and he'll put the squeeze on that and Sean Newcomb is through his first inning no score game one Braves and Giants at AT&T Park. And Giants, while we have a moment, let's check out our baseball history brought to you by Geico. The Braves have been hitting homers at a furious pace. Nine different Braves have hit 10 or more homers. That ties for most in franchise history. And eight of them are in the lineup tonight. Charlie Culberson, the only one that's not playing. Pretty awesome to have that many guys going deep. And isn't it funny? We talked about that in spring training. That was, I think, a very big yeah. question. Who's going to hit home runs on right. this team? Well, that's answered by <laughs> all those guys. Yeah. Including Kurt Suzuki, who's got 12 of them. You know, it's funny, too, because there's a chance that maybe nobody hits 30. Maybe, but maybe not. But the fact that it's all spread out through your lineup is really a good thing. 
Kurt Suzuki at 268 on the year. And Rodriguez misses downstairs. One ball, no strikes. What a refreshing time to visit San Francisco after the heat and humidity of the summer in the south and the blazing weather in Phoenix. To get to San Fran on a 60 degree night and playing well. And that's got everybody's spirits high. As Kelsey mentioned, the Braves start action four and a half games in front of the Philadelphia Phillies in the east. The Phillies were rained out today in Bull Durham like fashion. Yeah exactly. The game in Philadelphia was canceled tonight because they didn't put the tarp on the infield over the weekend and it rained and they couldn't get the infield ready for play today. They were bringing blow torches out to try to get the dirt dried out. Couldn't do it. And so the Washington Nationals Phillies game tonight was postponed. They'll play a double header tomorrow. Strike miss. Two balls two strikes. Nice change up. Yeah I'm sure Major League Baseball is going to be all over that. Want to know what the deal was. <laughs> Did the groundskeeper lose the keys to the tractor that moves the tarp or something. How does that happen. Maybe you just took a couple of days off Jeff you know. <laughs> <laughs> Pull foul. Teams out of town. Well, what could go wrong? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, they're they're going to have their share of rain in the east this week Ooh. with the uh, Hurricane Florence bearing down on the southeast, and for all of our friends in South Carolina, North Carolina, the Georgia coast too. Please heed the weather warnings. This is a very serious storm ahead that will impact baseball games as well up and down the east coast. That, of course. Secondary at the most. Yeah, this this looks like a whopper. Yeah, and uh, like you said, everybody needs to pay attention. Two balls, two strikes for Suzuki, leading off the second. No score. And that's outside. When I take my first look at Rodriguez with that long hair, I think of Tim Lincecum. Mm hmm. You'd almost make two of Tim, but yes. <laughs> right. <laughs> Bigger man than Lincecum. Who had a great career. That was fouled off Suzuki's foot. And we'll do it again, full count. There you go, the catcher thing again. Yep. Got a shin guard, but nothing. Ooh, did that get him on the calf? Thought it hit his foot. Baseball needs a rule. If you're a catcher and you foul a ball off an unprotected part of your body, you get first base. With all the punishment they take. It's, I don't think we're too far away from guys wearing full catcher shin guards. <laughs> don't they wear some pads kind of like that in cricket? You know, big. Oh, those shin high. Yeah, those leather things. Yeah, that, yeah. Almost look like hockey goalie. Right. Pads. That's why very few cricket hitters ever lead their league in stolen bases. That's true. However, but if they rig it just right, you could look like young Forrest Gump running with all your <laughs> stuff flying off. <laughs> uh, three two pitch is fouled away. You know, I think you might be onto something. I have to talk to Kurt about that yeah. after the game. Once he's through icing down his calf. Right. Another payoff pitch. And he earns a walk. Had a boy, Kurt. Well, that was hard earned. Yes, sir. Shut so. and walk a ton of guys. He only walked one in his last start against Colorado. He got a no decision, but he left the game having only given up one run to the Rockies in six innings. And that was on a homer. But the Rockies came back and took it out on his bullpen and beat him. He got a no decision. That's just his 28th walk. In 98 innings. Not bad for a former outfielder. Yeah. So he's in the stretch for the second time. Ender Inciarte, the batter. And that stroke to right and into the seats. The Giants did a great job on the Braves hitters down in Atlanta. The Braves did not much muster much offense in that three game series. 
And Ender was held hitless 0 for 11 by Bruce Boshi's ball club. This guy's coming to town sky high after hitting one of the longest homers any Brave has hit this year yesterday in the desert. And it was a huge homer considering where the game was. Down a run, a three-run bomb over the pool. What a what a ninth inning. Getting to watch it again in the opening video today was a lot of fun. But one pitch out of the plate. One ball, two strikes. Easy swing too. It tried to bunt twice, couldn't, and then went into launch mode. Razor down a run. Until that at bat by Ender. 432 feet. One ball, two strikes. Suzuki a short lead at first. Belt holds him. And this one's lifted toward left. Praying Mantis Hunter Pence drifts over and makes the play for out number one. Pence hasn't started many games of late for the Giants. Only his sixth start in the last 32 played. They've got some young players they're evaluating out there, but unfortunately, a couple of them have gotten hurt. So Hunter Pence getting some playing time here in the final weeks of the regular season as Ozzie Albee stands in with one on, one out. He showed butt, drew the bat back. One ball, no strikes. Adding insult to injury, if you will, for the Giants as they try to evaluate players going forward. They've lost Ryder Jones, who's an infielder. He dislocated his knee swinging the bat up in Milwaukee. As this one's fouled away. And Steven Duggar, an outfielder, tore the labrum in his shoulder and has had to have surgery. So two young players yeah. for a team that's desperately in need of some youth lost for the year. Well, and, and they were going to get their opportunity. You yeah. Know, in the last month, they were going to get to a lot of at-bats, see how they stack up. Giants like a lot of teams pitching up in the zone. To these Braves hitters, especially Ozzie, who I think, for the most part, has done a good job of laying off that pitch in recent days. Braves are pushing up the pitch count for Rodriguez. With Suzuki at first, one out, one two pitch. And he showed punt and Huntley smothered that. Nice play. Two and two. Yeah, even one and two with them shifted so far over, just taking it for granted he's not going to bunt. He had virtually the whole left side to try to keep one fair if he can get it down. That moves Brandon Crawford a few steps over to the third base side of second base now. Longoria, maybe a step closer to third than he was a moment ago. Up and in, almost hit him. Full count. Dansby Swanson's the next Braves hitter, barring a double play. Kurt leads. And the pitch is popped up again toward left. And Hunter Pence will make that play. Another very good changeup. Rodriguez has an advantage. Braves have never seen him before. They'll have a much better idea the second time through the order. Let's see what Dansby can do. Well, everybody except Acuna. Ronald swung at the first pitch. So it'll be all over new again his next time up. I love that. 
low home camera angle right behind home plate. I don't know of any other ballpark where we are able to enjoy that. That's a great shot. Great big hitters background here in San Fran. The pitch is high. It gives you a sense. It's not 100 percent but it gives you a sense of the time from the time the ball leaves the pitcher's hand to it gets to home plate of how much reaction time there really is. Truly a blink of an eye. Yeah. That's down the right field line and into the box seats beyond the Braves dugout two balls at a strike. Good take three and one. Blazers would love to get Newcomb up, clear him at the very least in the top of the second. And now a full count. So a two out, Suzuki will be running here. Like he's not afraid to use that off speed pitch even behind in the count. So the stretch and the pitch runner goes. It's popped up. Crawford drifts back. He's got plenty of room backpedaling now and makes the play and that retires the side. So Rodriguez battles back from a 3 1 count. Swanson and the Braves are retired in the top of the second. playing for the Major League Baseball team that's playing in the 2018 Japan All-Star Series over in November. Now this is a longtime tradition that tra dates back to 1986 and Major League Baseball sends an elite group of players and they play an All-Star team from MPB. That's the highest level of pro ball in Japan and Brian Snicker said he is most excited for Acuna to play over there because he's going to get a play alongside guys like Yadier Molina, Christian Yelich, Carlos Santana and when I asked Acuna about it he said he's really excited for an opportunity to go play over in Japan expand his horizons and to do what he loves guys. I think it'll be a wonderful experience for him and what a what a real wonderful honor at his age and rookie status to be included in that. That's a great thing. Absolutely. Wonder if Yoshi is going to be teaching. 
Ronald Acuna any Japanese yeah. phrases. They ought to have some classes between yeah. now and the end of the season. So scoreless game we head to the home second Brandon Crawford will lead off Pence and Tomlinson will follow. Brandon Crawford has always been a Braves killer. But he's hitting 259 this year. And a buck 54 over his last 19 games. One ball one strike. And that's taken low ball two. Crawford has been one of the best shortstops in baseball not just the National League for the last couple years. This season. Not as fortunate either at the plate or a field he's committed 14 errors. Which doesn't sound like Brandon Crawford. No it doesn't. I, he hasn't been 100 percent a lot of the year. Three time gold glover. Great series in Atlanta. Yes, he did. Crawford, 31 years old. He'll be 32 next year. Signed through the 2021 season for the Giants. Came the first shortstop to win three straight gold gloves since Jimmy Rollins did it for the Phillies. And the first Giant at any position to win three straight gold gloves since J.T. Snow. Full count pitch and a swing and a miss. There's that fastball at 96 miles an hour. Two strikeouts for Newcomb. And he's gotten both leadoff hitters to swing and miss. Well, you gotta like the aggressiveness from Sean Newcomb tonight. Good start to his game. Here's Hunter Pence. This is the final year of Hunter Pence's contract with the San Francisco Giants. This guy's been a good player for a long time. The Astros, the Phillies, and here in San Francisco. One of the more popular players ever to wear Giants colors. That's the truth. Here at AT&T Park. On the ground, the third right at Camargo, who fires to first in time, two outs. 12 years in the big leagues, good for him. All kinds of injuries that he's had to work through. Of course, you play that long, and you don't go unscathed. No. Kelby Tomlinson is the second baseman for San Francisco. Hitting 217 for the year. A high hopper found a third. When we last saw the Giants in Atlanta. They swept the Braves, as we said. They left town 19 and 15. That looked like it was going to be a turning point in their season. They were rolling. They were very good. They then went to Philadelphia and got clobbered. And not much has gone right for them since they left Atlanta in the first week of May. One ball, two strikes, bases empty, two outs, and the pitch. Is lifted toward right over by the Braves bullpen. Long run, Arcake is in. He can't navigate the bullpen mound. And no play as that ball bounces into the seats. There are not many big league ballparks that still have the bullpens on the field of play. Most of them are beyond the fences. And if you remember in the history of AT&T Park when this place opened, they said, okay, the place looks great. We're a few weeks away from over today, where are the bullpens? They forgot. Yeah. So that's how the bullpens ended up down the third and first base lines. Except for the left fielder and the right fielder, it works for everybody. <laughs> for just such a case as we just saw. 
Newcomb with a swing and a miss of Tomlinson has his third strikeout and his first one two three inning he'll lead off the third no score. by Georgia Power with the Los Bravos ticket package you get a game ticket and a custom flag and your Braves will be wearing their special Los Bravos jerseys go to Braves.com slash Los Bravos and get your tickets today to complete in San Francisco no score Joe Simpson Kelsey Winger Chip Carey the rest of our great Fox Sports crew with you from AT&T Park our lone visit to San Francisco this year. Derek Rodriguez versus Sean Newcomb. That's the matchup. Batter and pitcher here in the Braves third. And that floated in for a called strike. It's 0 2. But hook. I believe we're back here earlier next year. I think it's in May. And three pitches retires Newcomb. Two strikeouts for Rodriguez. And we go back to the top. And Ronald Acuna Jr. Ronald is our greatness made here feature presented by Sinovas, and he has been playing great since the All Star break. And, and you keep thinking, well, these are going to kind of fade. They're going to, pitchers are going to catch up to him a little bit. But he just stays at this remarkable level since the All Star break, batting leadoff, tremendous numbers. I know we all love the batting average. We love the homers. We love the RBIs. The point you made in Phoenix was the run scored. Yeah. 43 runs in 49 games out of the number one spot on the lineup. And yank foul. It's a ball and a strike. And our first chance for one of the ball dudes here at AT&T Park. Uh -oh. That was Paul Morton. 63 years young who lives in Dana Point. Big Giants fan. Used to watch him play at Candlestick Park. Dana Point, that's down by San Diego. Yeah, it's a long commute. That's, that's uh, Greg Maddox neighborhood. Yeah. Well, he just booted one. That's brutal. Come on, Paul. <laughs> Pitch. Is rolled foul toward Longoria. Tough play. Fields and fires on the run and got Acuna by a step and quickly to her out. Sadly, Longoria didn't boot one. And five straight set down by Rodriguez. Always oh, a top notch defender. Good play there. Giants took on a lot of contract when they got him. He signed through 2022. After starring for so many years in Tampa Bay. And that's, that's the challenge for the Giants. This is an older club. At the time we saw them in Atlanta, they were the third oldest team in the major leagues. How do they get younger? How do they rebuild their farm system? 
and more importantly for this fan base and in this ballpark how do they remain competitive in a suddenly challenging National League West with the Dodgers the Rockies the Diamondbacks and the Padres who have a great farm system. Well all inclusive farm system free agency trades anything they can do to prevent having to do a rebuild I'm told that fans here as spoiled as they have been with the success of this team and is the way they turn out in huge numbers year after year they're not they're not all in on any kind of rebuild the 2 2 pitch to Camargo is upstairs you can make the case Madison Bumgarner might be their most marketable player uh -huh. if they decided to go that route right especially since he's got an option year left on his contract more or less already signed. And it, I'm not sure what the number is for Bumgarner, but it's not crazy. Twenty five thirty million. No, I don't think it's, it is. It's yeah. a very team friendly contract. Uh -huh. But Cueto had Tommy John surgery. He's out for all of next season. One presumes Jeff Samarja has been injured three different times this year. Another pop up on the left side is going to be handled by Longoria. So, no answers for Rodriguez. No answers yet for the Giants either. No score after two and a half. And that's our Zaxby's indescribably good play. Atlanta's pitching on the road has been spectacular. Yeah, we showed it for the year. How about this over the last 15 road starts? A 169 ERA and a sub one whip. Walks, hits, per innings pitched. First pitch swing by Gorky's Hernandez. He shoots one into the gap in right center. That's down and backed up by Marquecas. And Gorky's Hernandez with a bloop single. Giants have a couple of those in the game, and the first leadoff man is on. Hernandez, their eighth place hitter. What a year this guy's having. Not even counting the bloops. Didn't hit a home run last year. And he's got 15 this year. Go figure. Guess he's got the launch angle thing figured out. Maybe. He did on that bloop. And he's aboard in front of Rodriguez, who shows bunt. And he pushes that toward Freddie Freeman. There'll be one play. Perfect sacrifice. So the top of the order on stage for the Giants now where they've struggled so mightily. Runner in scoring position. The first of the night. San Francisco six for 45 as we told you in this situation over their last 10 games. Kind of comes in handy for Rodriguez that he was an outfielder for the first three years of his career to be able to put a bunt down. And swing the bat if needed.
So Slater became or becomes I should say the key man in the inning. He struck out his first time up. Keep an eye on Hernandez. He's stolen five bases. The left hander on the mound. If Sean doesn't look back at him, he might try to take off here. Didn't look. He's off and running. Swing and a miss. Ball dropped. It's a stolen base. You're all over that chip. And I don't think Sean. Altered his looks. He may have come set and been looking down out of the corner of his eye, but then take another look at him. It's funny, Hernandez says home runs are up and stolen bases are down. He's changed his game. Infield in now, and that one almost to the screen. Ball two. So the Single sacrifice and stolen base means a flyout could get the Giants the first run of the game. Slater with 18 RBIs on the year ahead in the count. Drives that one into the seats right side. Two and two. Sean got Slater with a good live fastball his first time up. Let's see if he can induce a swing and a miss here. Out of the stretch and the 2 2 pitch is bounced over to Margo and into left field for a run scoring hit. So San Francisco manufactures a third inning run. They lead one to nothing. Infield in. It's a base hit. Infield back. Easy out. Margo in on that little cutout. Couldn't quite reach it. What a difference between the area in front of home plate here in San Francisco <laughs> as opposed to Arizona. Yeah. So here's Brandon Belt. He drives the first one toward the gap in left. Acuna is there and makes the catch on the track at the 382 mark. That ball was curling back toward him, which helped him make the play. A deep drive, though, is the second out of the inning. So Slater back at first after he earned his 19th run battered in. And Evan Longoria is the hitter. He bounced out and reached on a force play in the opening inning. Hitting 198 in his last 25 games. That's it towards short. Dansby has that one. Fires to second on the mark. And that will retire the side. Infield in and a bouncing ball over the head of Camargo earns the Giants the game's first run in the third.
ninth inning, Freddie Freeman, Nick Markakis, and Kurt Suzuki. It's game one of three here in San Francisco. The Giants have scored the first run and lead one to nothing. More good signs for the Braves. Freddie Freeman doubled the other way his first time up. That came with two outs, and he was left stranded after a strikeout ended the Braves' first time up. See if they can make an adjustment with Rodriguez, who's had a very good changeup in tonight's game. Braves have popped out a lot in the first three innings. I hope they've got that out of their system after the three home run night day yesterday. Everybody's still in that mode a little bit here in the early going. Freddie now six for 18 at the plate on the road trip. That is more Freddie Freeman like. As is a take like that. One ball one strike. Good take there too. Little looper into left field. And that's down for a hit. Freeman's two for two. As you said, he's making his way back. Here we go. So Freeman has both Braves hits. Kind of fought that one off, but a thing of beauty. I was just thinking about Derek Rodriguez. And he was a sixth round pick by the Twins in 2011. So he must have been a pretty good outfielder slash hitter. Played three years in the outfield. But well, what a wonderful thing for him to decide. You know what? I think I want to pitch. Dad, do you know anybody that knows anything about pitching? Yeah. Right? <laughs> I mean, think about the knowledge that Rodriguez would get from his dad who could catch basically bullpens for him well and, yeah and say OK here's Mike Trout how do you get Mike Trout out well just the mechanics just sitting there talking about anything you need to know about pitching mechanics Pudge had seen it he knows when a guy's off when he's on and the basics what a what a wonderful advantage he had there. And again, I repeat what I said before. What did the Twins not see that the Giants did? As that one's out of play foul. Rodriguez was a minor league free agent, and there were several teams that were interested in signing him, and he called around and did his due diligence. And the man that really recruited him to come play in San Francisco was Pablo Sandoval. Hmm. So how great the fan base was, how great the ballpark was, how great Bruce Boshi was. One ball, two strikes. And that one got through the legs of Hundley, and Freeman will move up. There's a break for Atlanta. And now the count two and two for Marcakis. Right through the wickets. I'm going to assume wild pitch did hit the dirt. That would be a break then for Hunley. And we will await the official ruling. Runner at second, nobody out. Base hit could tie the game for Atlanta. Big lead for Freddie. And that's taken high for a full count. It was scored a wild pitch. Nick did the great job the other night over in Phoenix of getting Freddie over after Freddie stole second. And just topped one and rolled it to the right side when he's behind in the count. And that's what he's thinking about right now, even on a 3 2 count. He's pulling the ball. And he did exactly that. A top spin roller, just like in Phoenix. Rodriguez wins the race to the bag. But a productive out for Nick Markakis, who will get the glad hand from his mates as he heads to the Braves' dugout on the first base side. Runner at third, and now one out. Yeah, and it's almost an instant replay, but. 
again, I say, I hope the young guys see how Nick operates with that. Just cuts down on his swing, not trying to hit the ball out of the ballpark, but he's trying to give himself up and get Freddie to third, which he did beautifully. So now it's the Giants' turn to play the infield in, leading one to nothing. Kurt Suzuki walked in the second inning. And he was left stranded. Braves have left two on base so far. As that one's back to the screen, foul a strike. Looking for something off speed, got it and missed it. Kurt's also very good in these situations of doing what's required to try to get that guy in from third, less than two outs. It's a homecoming of sorts for Suzuki, who played across the bay with the A's, 2007 through 2012, and again in 2013. One ball, one strike. Right back where it came from, and the game is tied. Kurt Suzuki with a base hit up the middle. That scores Freddie Freeman, and the Braves fans rejoice. It's 1-1 in the fourth inning. That's how you do it. They sit. Wow, pitch got him to second base, but then got him to third. And Kurt jumps on a fastball. Two seamer. Right back where it came from. 47th RBI. So we're tied at one in inning number four. Ender the batter. He flied out to left. Hanging breaking ball and foul that away for a strike. That shaved a corner. Oh, and two. That looked like a cutter. That stayed high. One ball, two strikes. Stakes are very high for the Braves in this game. Phillies were rained out. If Atlanta wins, they would be five games up with 18 to play. One two pitch. Swing and a fly ball to center. But playable for Gorkis Hernandez. And back to first goes Suzuki. Two men out. Another big series taking place at Wrigley Field in Chicago. Milwaukee three, Cubs two, bottom nine. Wow. Well, I don't think the Cubs left Washington any too happy. No. And they have to go back to Washington on Thursday. But with the bad weather that's expected, I again wonder if baseball is going to move that game. I don't know. Or move it to an even later date. I'm wondering about the weather in Philly tomorrow. I couldn't play today because of the wet grounds. <laughs> that's <laughs> not from rain. That's so classic. Yeah, it is. The only thing sweeter would have been if it had happened in Washington. <laughs> Well, Nats have had their share of doubleheaders lately. Yeah. Long days. 1 0 pitch. We'll see the Nationals on our last homestand. In fact, they'll be in Friday the 14th after we finish up this road trip with the Giants on Wednesday. Then the Cardinals, then the Phillies for four. What an interesting next week and a half it's going to be for the Braves. The pitch is squibbed up the middle. Crawford is short, fires to first in time, and that'll retire the side. Atlanta manufactures a run of their own. Kurt Suzuki with his 47th RBI ties it up.
Live with the Fox Sports Go app. Log in, select the Braves, and start streaming. Presented by your Atlanta Hyundai dealers. Hope you're enjoying the broadcast so far back in Braves country. Gretchen Caney, our terrific producer with us tonight. Mike Miller is our director. Drew Jenkins, our stat man. Brandon Culpepper is our AD tonight. Perfect evening for baseball. Sean Newcomb's in a tie game with Hundley Crawford and the praying mantis Hunter Pence coming up. So far, so good. Much improved numbers for Sean so far on those first pitch strikes. Eight out of 12. And of the eight first pitch strikes, the hitters are one for eight. One of your four keys throws strike one, and he is looking like he did in the month of May so far through three innings. And knock on wood, no walks. And a first pitch strike to Hundley, a breaking ball and a beauty. Strike one. The Western Division race is coming into focus a little more clearly after tonight's play. Dodgers went to Cincinnati and got clobbered 10 to 6 at the Great American Ballpark. The Rockies lead Arizona 11 to 2 in the seventh. Whoa. Arizona is having major relief pitching problems. Arizona led that game one to nothing for what it's worth. Yeah, they were they were a little beaten down yesterday. Yes, he did. You're right. That's another leadoff man struck out by Newcomb. Three of the four innings tonight have been swinging strikeouts. Little upstairs, couldn't lay off. He has a terrific fastball. What was the count on that pitch? Is that one and two? Oh and two? Here's one Crawford. and two. Okay. That that backs up my point that I was making yesterday about so many two and two counts with that high target and fastball that missed and turned into three and two counts. Mm -hmm. You try it one and two, okay, if he doesn't swing, the worst case scenario is it's two and two. And to your point, if you throw it two and two and you miss, then you have to throw a strike or you've got a base run. Then you have to make a much better pitch. Give yourself two pitches to play with, not one. Correct. One ball, one strike. And he's starting to paint now, and Ooh. Crawford could do nothing with that one. This is kind of the other key. This is looking like May Newcomb. That's the old chicken versus the egg argument. Do you have confidence because you have good stuff, or does your good stuff beget confidence because you see the results of your good stuff? I think Sean is just inexperienced enough that if things don't go well right away, then he's pitching not to get hit. But when he gets off to a good start like this, dynamite. Lots of strikes for Newcomb. He's in a tie game with Crawford up there. One ball, two strikes. Braves play Crawford straight up. Shade him to the opposite field of the outfield. He pulls that one foul at first. Oh, oh no. no, no. That's Chris Clark. <sighs> the other ball dude. We're going to be nicer to him. I don't know. Yeah, we have to. Oh. You know why? No. You like to play golf, right? Yes. Chris is the past president of the Northern California Golf Association. You <laughs> never know when you need a tea yeah. time out here. Yeah, you get that number for me. <laughs> <laughs> and he's hearing it from, yeah. from his buddy across the diamond, Paul Morton. <laughs> Pitch. That is one of the many fun things they do here. They have added and injected so much personality in. Their on field presentation here. A lot of fun. Two balls, two strikes. And rolled toward first. That will be fouled at the bag. Break for Crawford. He'll head back to the plate.
I've said this many times about Brendan Crawford, but I'm going to repeat it because it was one of my favorite things I heard from Bruce Bochy about Crawford when he first came up, when he was a rookie. And everybody was talking about him and singing his praises. And he said, if you'll play to left, when you broke back and now in a step or two, made the play. He said, if Brandon will pay half as much attention to his hitting as he does his hair, we'll be just fine. <laughs> <laughs> Did he really say that? <laughs> Bruce said that That's about him. the greatest him. of all time. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> everybody in Braves country wants Atlanta to win this game tonight. Right? We, yep. we, we get that. It's business. You. Heck yeah, we do. Play the schedule. No matter who you play, you want to beat them, right? And it's okay to want to knock off the Giants, but you have to have the ultimate respect for Bruce Boshi, the man and the manager. And speaking of stories we've told many times, I'll never forget the final game managed by Bobby Cox when the Giants beat the Braves in the playoff series. And as they were getting ready to celebrate on the field at Turner Field, his entire team stopped. And turned to the Braves dugout and gave Bobby Cox a tip of the cap and a standing ovation. Yep. It was wonderful, really class act. And in a sport that is, is as tough as they come and played by tough men, that was as close to the NHL end of series mm -hmm. hockey handshake as this sport will ever see. And it was unbelievably classy. Agreed. Two balls, two strikes for Hunter Pence. And a swing and a miss. How about that pitch? Boy. Changeup makes an appearance. Pence missed it. Five strikeouts for Newcomb. Game tied. He's coming up second, and we're through four in Frisco. Fifth inning, and as always, the fifth inning is presented by Audi and Q5. Dansby Swanson leads off. First pitch pops it up. And who wants this? It'll be Kelby Tomlinson. And one pitch, one out. The Giants defensively have made 86 errors. That's ninth best out of 15 teams in the National League. But you hit the ball in the air like that constantly, you're going to make them a lot better. Dansby's popped out twice. Newcomb struck out once. He's the next Atlanta hitter. And six pop ups. Seven. That's downstairs. Two balls, no strikes. 
Is anybody in the kayak out on McCovey Cove tonight? A beautiful night to be out there chasing home run balls. As this one's lifted toward left, and Hunter Pence will surround it and make the play. Two outs. Race fans, the 2019 schedule is out, and A list memberships are on sale. With the 2019 A list membership, you'll get access to postseason tickets this year, and you'll get exclusive benefits, priority access, and year long discounts next year. Head to Braves.com A list today. Here's Acuna. He's played Pepper with Evan Longoria twice. And he takes a strike. This would be a great night to be out in McCovey Cove. We've got the lights of AT&T Park here and across the bay. Oakland Coliseum all lit up for the Raiders who are playing football tonight. Maybe Ronald can splash one down right here and break a 1-1 tie. He appears to be so much more confident, so much more under control in the batter's box. What a beautiful view from across the cove. He took a shot that way and fouled it off. Yeah, I think in recent last couple of weeks, especially his ability to hit the ball the other way is just a direct result from him being patient and waiting, staying back. Good take there. Full count. I would assume Joe some of that's from seeing the league now twice. It's not all shiny and new for him. As he takes ball four, a two out walk, brings up Camargo. So let's see if Ronald starts to think about running. By the way, he's got a shot on a 2020 year. Last player to be younger than 21 years old with a 20 homer, 20 steal season was Mike Trout, who did that in 2012. Veda Pinson did it also for the Reds in 1959. Boy, can Veda run. Cunha's 14 for 19 in steals, and he's got a big lead. He's chased back, standing up. Nick Hunley. 19% on stolen bases on caught stealings. 10 out of 42. Johan's had himself a terrific month, whether it's hitting fifth or hitting second. He's our Georgia lottery hitting the jackpot. He's just, he's like the, the sniper. You, you worry about Acuna getting on or Freddie hitting third. And this guy comes up and tears you up batting second now. But he pops another one up. That'll be three pop outs for. Johan Camargo. Nothing doing in the Atlanta fifth. It's 1 1 Braves and Giants game one. At McCovey Cove in Frisco.
podcast by sharing stories throughout baseball and the Braves organization. Join us Friday and Sunday only on Fox Sports South and Fox Sports Go. It's presented by Nissan. That's right. This coming weekend with the Nationals in town, please take note of a schedule change. The Saturday game on the 15th and the Saturday game on the 22nd will be carried by Big Fox nationally. Those will be 105 starts, not 710 as listed on your Brave schedule. Sean Newcomb goes to work in the home fifth. Tomlinson, Hernandez, and Rodriguez scheduled. Sean has struck out five batters. He's surrendered three hits, and he's tied one apiece. This guy's a good story. Kelby Tomlinson, <clears throat> tall, skinny guy out of, born in Chickasha, Oklahoma, but grew up in Elgin, which is a town of about maybe 1,500 to 2,000 people. He had no offers to play college baseball, but his uncle called around to every junior college in the area and found him a place to go play in Seward County Community College in Liberal, Kansas. From there, he played well enough to go on to play at Texas Tech and then sign with the Giants. Small town guy playing in the big leagues. He was the first player from Seward Community College to make it to the big leagues. Two balls, two strikes. This one's popped up in the right. And Nick will catch that one for the first out. So, yeah, you're right. I'm sure Pride of Chickasha, Oklahoma, made a big bang in his hometown. How about his first major league hit? A grand slam in the major leagues. No kidding. Yeah. First, excuse me, first career home run, a grand slam off James Russell of the Cubs. So Kelby Tomlinson, great story. And getting extended playing time for an injury riddled Giants club this year. Here's Hernandez. He scored the lone run. A single, took second on a sacrifice, stole third, and then came home on a base hit through a drawn in infield. I love those stories. I, I, I love the tales of the unheralded who overcame maybe the, the prejudice of somebody saying they were too small or too weak or whatever the case may be. You know, uh, Michael Jordan's a, an easy one to point at getting cut from his eighth grade basketball team. But there's so many others like Kelby Tomlinson who were not highly thought of, not highly recruited at all. And turned into good players. Great story indeed. Two balls and a strike for Gorky Hernandez, who's a former Brave. Atlanta got him from the Tigers with Jair Jurgens for Edgar Renteria. And Gorky Hernandez was traded to Pittsburgh with Charlie Morton and Jeff Locke for Nate McLeod. He then went to Miami, Kansas City, the White Sox. Mexican League and then the Giants signed him after the 2015 season as a free agent and he swings and misses that strikeout number six for Newcomb Hernandez asks if it was a strike the answer is yes two out well most of the reason that Gorky's Hernandez kept getting a job and, and playing for all those teams was that he was a good defender really fast could cover a lot of ground play any of the three outfield spots and not because he could hit and here he is this year with 15 homers. That's an amazing turnaround for a, uh -huh. a light hitting outfit. Zero to 15 in the home run column from year to year. So Derek Rodriguez, the batter, he's got a 1 1 count. You can try for another 1 2 3 inning. It would be his second in a row if Derek would oblige him. Sean's a strike away from accomplishing that. One ball, two strikes. Seen a lot of Braves jerseys in the crowd tonight. So another former Brave who was a teammate of number 44, Dusty Baker, who's in the ballpark tonight. Former Giants manager. 
Two balls, two strikes. And a change up of beauty. That strikes out Rodriguez. Newcomb has seven punch outs through five innings. Now he'll hope Freddie Freeman and company can give him the lead. Braves are coming up next. Up their 19th last at bat win of the season last night, and it was an instant classic. And after the game, Brian Snicker compared it to Bobby Cox's final season. You heard Chip and Joe talking about that earlier. And Snicker said the skipper has been watching every game this season and this road trip, even on the West Coast. He says he's getting texts for every single night from him about that exact subject of this team fighting. And he said he knows he's been staying up because he's getting texts right when the game ends. And he says the skipper is just as amazed as everyone else and he loves the grit and the heart of this team. What a compliment Kelsey. I mean it, to have Bobby pay that much attention of course that's not that's not surprising but to text Snit and tell him how much he thinks of his team and the way they're playing that's a great thing. So Skipper hope you're enjoying the game. This is the kind of game he would love. Two good pitchers getting after it. What he really love is for Freddie Freeman to lead off with a hit. Freddie's two for two tonight. And it took a shot to left. Mike Kruko, longtime broadcaster, former Major League pitcher, longtime broadcaster here for the Giants, was saying before the game today he thinks Snicker ought to be the manager of the year in the National League. No argument here. Nope. Remarkable job as the Braves try for their 80th win tonight. Those already have the best road record in the National League. The Braves have already gone past their win total from last year. Victory tonight would give them a five game divisional lead. Nothing would be better than for the Braves to have a seven or eight game lead by the time they play the Phillies at home. Yeah, that'd be something. That'd be nice. And oh. swing and a miss. Good pitch by good Rodriguez. Way. And he gets Freeman for the first time tonight. Really good pitch. Breaking ball, good downer. Freddie yeah. was on it. That was nasty. It was nasty. One out. Here's Nick Markakis, productive out, earned the Braves a run in the fourth inning. So he's 0 for 2 with an asterisk tonight. And that's in for a strike. It's 0 and 1. It is a very comfortable night tonight. Refreshing night, as we've said a couple of times. Far cry from the way games used to be played at Candlestick Point. Yep. I can only imagine what it was like being in the outfield. <laughs> Endured there a time or two. You know that that batting insulation that you roll out in your attic? Yeah. Uh huh. I was playing right field at Candlestick one night and it looked like insulation rolling over the top of the roof. The fog? Uh huh. This one slashed toward left and right at Pence. And that's the second out. Yeah, they'd have the fog horn blowing. The fans would be bundled up in parkas and we had stopped one night. Did you? Yeah, we had stopped and 
one of the coaches came out like between the mound and second base and hit some fly balls to see if the outfielders could see the ball and of course we couldn't. Wow. So I had to wait. Wait for it to lift a little bit. Just watching those poor fans bundled up in the mid to late innings of a game there. The wind howling, the fog rolling in. It's a huge home field advantage. And the hardiest of Hardy who could stick it out were given ceremonial pins. <laughs> they called it the Croy de Candlestick. If you could survive a night game in the Giants home park. Rodriguez has gone to the curveball. There's the changeup a lot in the early innings. Now he's broken out the nasty curve. Suzuki has the Braves RBI, but he's down two strikes. And a high fastball. Wasn't chased. One and two. That just missed. Hurts our AARP take on today feature. A lot of that has to do with a good eye. <laughs> yeah. Take on today. His last 18 games, beautiful, 4 and 11. It's almost clipped there. I'm just glad that that AARP feature is given to somebody older than 20. Mm -hmm. On the club, it applies. So pitch number 100 for Rodriguez. It's payoff. And it's popped up over the Braves dugout and into the seats. We'll try it again. His 11 RBIs include six straight games with a run driven in for him. That's hit toward left. Pence on the run and can't get it. Ball's kicked back toward the foul line. And Kurt Suzuki's got a perfect night. A walk and two singles. He's aboard with two outs. That was so quick. That's just hands. Gets his hips cleared, but just hands to the baseball. Watch this. Zip. Boy, way out in front. And I mean the point of contact out in front because he's so quick. Another hard hit ball for him. Need to get Hunter Pence chin strap for his cap. He's lost it a couple of times out there and left. So here's Ender. He's flied out twice. Let's see if Atlanta can manufacture something with two outs. And it's pulled toward Belt oh. first. He's a terrific defender. And he backhanded that ball to end the inning. No runs a hit. A man left. We head to the bottom of the sixth inning. Top of the order up for the Giants.
up. It's the stretch. It's presented by Sunovas, the bank of here. Good ball game in San Fran. Sean Newcomb pitching like the man we saw dominate in the first half of the season. Tonight, he has struck out seven men through five innings. He's got a tie game. He's limited the Giants to just three hits. Best news of all, Joe, he hasn't walked anybody in the uh, game. Isn't it great? Again, a ton of walks over his last 29 innings, 17 of them coming into this start. But everything's working off the fastball. He's aggressive with the fastball and setting up everything else. So the one, two, three hitters are up for the Giants. Austin Slater will be first. And a rare ball one miss from Newcomb. 80 pitches for Sean. For five innings. And fouled away for an even count. Colorado keeps pouring on the runs. It's 13 to 2 in the ninth. They had a six run inning and a seven run inning. And Arizona has three more games with the Rockies there. Then they go to Houston. Then they come home and play the Cubs. Yeah. Then they have Colorado at home. Needless to say, it's going to be a very tough road to hold for the Diamondbacks there to make the playoffs. That is a gauntlet. At the moment, they're three and a half games behind St. Louis for the second wild card. Cardinals came back and won 8 7. Too short. Dansby got a hoppy light and fires a strike to first. One out. Yeah, the Cardinals got four in the eighth inning. Three run homer by Matt Adams was the key. What a pickup he's been for them. Yeah. And we'll see Matt Adams and the Cardinals September 17th, 18th, and 19th. Mike Schilt is the new manager of that St. Louis club, and he's done an outstanding job of turning around the Cardinals' fortunes. And boy, does Matt Adams like hitting at SunTrust Park. Yeah. Here's Brandon Bell to single and a fly out. And ball one to Belt. Belt signed through 2021. He played 104 games last year, hit 18 homers. Concussions have been the problem for Brandon Belt. Four of them in eight years. Went to the disabled list in August and did not come back for the Giants last year. I think when you look at some of their veteran everyday players, you see when you see their numbers, it kind of spells out their season. He is second on their team in RBIs with 49. I'm sorry, third. Longoria has 49, he has 46, and Crawford has 50. Crawford leads their team with 50 RBIs. Meanwhile, for the Braves, Nick Markakis 88, Freeman 84, Camargo 70, Acuna 53, and about 90 games. Yeah, they are offensively challenged. Here we go. He did not. It's a full count. Three balls, two strikes. Hey, swing and a miss. Number eight for Newcomb. Nice comeback to get Belt. And he did it with an off speed pitch. Maybe this curveball. Well, it's like a change up that had a lot of sinking action on it. Yeah, like he turned it over. I'm sorry, nobody could see that, could they? No. You showed me a little curve, curve, screwball move. Yeah, my wrist popped and everything. Was, I said yes. <laughs> <laughs> like everybody at home could see that. It's my best effort. <laughs> As Blancoria takes low. One ball, no strike. So, so how do the Giants fix this? How do they fix it? They have, I, I'm assuming, the payroll is what, 200 million? Yep, this year, before they traded away yeah. McCutcheon and company. Uh huh. But they've also got 
on, they're on the hook for a lot of injured guys like Cueto, like I don't think Sandoval is. I think Sandoval's money's still coming from Boston. Boston right. Um, well, Samarja, Samarja's been DL'd three times. He's got 19 million a year for the next two. As this one's hit on the ground, Dansby to his left, fields and fires to first. So, yeah, they have some big name guys that have had big time injury problems, and they're not exactly spring chickens either. No. So, we'll continue that thought as we go to the seventh inning and a tie game, one apiece. A chilly night in San Francisco. Great numbers for both guys, but especially Sean Newcomb. No walks, eight strikeouts. Gave up the one earned run in the third inning, but that was thanks to a little bloop, a stolen base. And you know, they manufactured it. Good job by them. Good job by the Braves to manufacture their run in the fourth. Sean's spot on the lineup card is due third here in the seventh. The Braves bullpen is busy as this one's rolled foul past first. Sam Dyson is up in the Giants pen as Rodriguez has now thrown 103 pitches in the game. Ground ball that's through and into center field for a hit. Ozzie around first big turn throw back toward first he deeped him and it's thrown off the ball boy and that'll be another base. How about that. That was such a brilliant baseball move. He suckered Hernandez right into it. And he will wind up at third base on a two base throwing error on a harmless single to center field. Barely got through, made a huge turn. Hernandez barehands it and comes up air mailing it, and you can see that Ozzy was already headed to second. Bluff, throw, go. I believe I heard the official scorer credit him with a double. He stopped after first yeah. base. Yeah, they'll have to look at that again. No matter, that was just a great. Baseball move by a 21 year old kid. Love it. So the infield again is in for the Giants who just committed their 87th error the fifth by Hernandez. And a fly ball to right. Will it be deep enough Slater with the catch charges. Here comes the tag. Here comes the throw and it has no chance. Atlanta takes a 2 1 lead. The kids come through again. Albies with a great base running play. And Swanson puts it in play to give Atlanta a 2 1 lead. And now we'll see what decision Brian Snitker makes here with the pitcher Sean Newcomb do next. I got to tell you, that, that was a great job by both 
Dansby getting him in. But that throw from Slater, it wasn't that deep. I mean, I was wondering if he would have a chance to get Ozzy. And he wasn't within 25 feet of home plate. So Sean Newcomb is the scheduled hitter. First to look at the catch and throw. I don't think Nuke expected to be up this inning and they had to. Oh, I changed. It was Duda that was out there. That's what they were doing, switching guys. Yeah, so it's Rio Ruiz who was just called up. Expanding the Braves roster to 36 active players. And Brian Snitker is going to go to his bullpen to get nine outs. Newcomb will depart after retiring 11 straight men in the game with eight strikeouts in total. Six innings of one run ball for Sean Newcomb. So we'll see how this works out for Atlanta. Newcomb was brilliant. Three hits. Atlanta leads 2 1 on a single, well, double with an E8 and a sack fly. That single might, that double might be changed to a single. But Swanson's 56th run batted in. Has put Atlanta in front. And Rio didn't get that. Rio just brought up today. And added back to the roster. That's lashed out of play foul. Ryan Snitker will take Newcomb down after six. He's got the lead. No balls, two strikes for Rio. It's downstairs, one and two. 93 pitches for Newcomb, 60 strikes. What a dramatic difference from his last start. 13 out of 21 first pitch strikes. That almost hit Ruiz, and it did hit Ruiz. Thank you very much. So Rodriguez might be running out of gas here as Rio gets plunked, and he's at first base for the top of the order, and Ronald Acuna Jr. But Bruce Boshi is on his way out, and that is going to be the end of the line for Derek Rodriguez. It appears Sam Dyson is going to be the new Giants relief pitcher. So Rodriguez deserved a better fate. He gave up a base hit, a bad decision by Hernandez, a great at bat by Swanson, and Atlanta leads in game one. Park app access and manage your tickets enjoy check in offers exclusive content and much more download the MLB ballpark app today. These two big league clubs play in spectacular ballparks SunTrust Park for Atlanta 
AT&T Park for the Giants where Sam Dyson is now pitching in relief of Derek Rodriguez. This guy's got a big arm. 68th game for him. Excellent ERA. 19 walks against 52 strikeouts. That's not bad coming out of the bullpen and he throws everything in addition to throwing hard 93 to 97 with a cutter change up slider curve. I can't think of anything else. I guess he could have some others split. Well it depends on how many fingers Hundley feels like using uh -huh. on any particular day as he faces Ronald Acuna man aboard a run in for the Braves in the seventh 2 1 Atlanta game one. That missed. Looked like a strike. I think Dyson was surprised it wasn't called. 68 appearances, most on the Giants Club. That's the number for Sam Dyson tonight. One ball, no strikes. That's off the screen and out of play. One and one. Nice catch, somebody in the dugout. Got Swanson. He's catching everything. Ender. One ball, one strike. Who caught that? Went off the protective screen and then back toward the dugout. And Ozzy with the play. Nice. He's telling Scott Frostberg all about it. He had a bird's eye seat. Two on is banged back to the mound. Dyson Spears fires to second one and the first double play. That was slick. Dyson gets out of the seventh inning, but the Braves cash in a run thanks to a throwing error by Gorky's Hernandez. Stick around. It's time for the stretch presented by Sonovas, the bank of here. Let's join Jerome back in Atlanta. Here's John Thompson on the pitch. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's Mike Frostad. It must be a Harry Carey seventh inning thing. I'm sorry about that. Mike had a little synapse problem. Huh. This is Shane Carl on a relief for Sean Newcomb, who finished with a flourish, retiring 11 straight. And a bouncing ball, foul at third. And strike one for Huntley. Interesting decision by Brian Snitker here. 
Newcomb's pitching great. We know the Braves bullpen issues that they had in Phoenix and the amount of work that they have carried. He's going to his pen to get mm -hmm. nine outs in a one run game. Yeah especially with the ease in which Newcomb had retired the side in order in the sixth. Dansby backs up catcher running long throw and a laser beam right on the money good play one out. But Shane Carl is like Sam Freeman. Neither one of them have given up a run since they came back from the disabled list. For Shane Carl that's five outings. Pittsburgh two games against Boston two against Arizona. Johnny Venters has gotten up in the Braves bullpen. He's starting to play catch. As Brandon Crawford bats he's 0 for 2. Last 12 Giants hitters have been retired in order. And in for a strike. Crowd announced tonight of 39,996. I don't think there are that many people here tonight. Well, there are that many tickets sold. Probably 20 to 25 here. Two quick strikes for Crawford. And the pitch is low and outside, one and two. for Shane to have a nice easy uneventful seventh and the one two pitch is on the way little pop right toward the shortstop Dansby has plenty of room he's got it and there's the second out the other side of this coin for Brian Snicker I would think Joe would be OK I have to balance workload I have to balance where the game is. But this is an opportunity for these guys in cooler weather to maybe get out there have some easy innings get a little confidence and get on a roll themselves. Now, I go back to Newcomb. I think him leaving the game under the circumstances he has is nothing but a big time shot in the arm for him confidence wise. Round ball to short it should be an easy inning and it is seven pitches for Shane Carl that is exactly what Brian Snitker was hoping to see. Yoan Camargo, Freddie Freeman, and Nick Markakis. I think if I got the names right, they're coming up. It's a 2 1 Atlanta lead. Well, here's the crazy scene in Philadelphia. Rain all weekend. They didn't have the tarp out. They brought out blow torches to try to get the infield dirt dried out and safe enough for players. Even Bryce Harper was helping out. But both 
teams had players come out and say that the infield and outfield just weren't safe enough to play, so they postponed tonight's game between the Phillies and the Nationals. They will play a doubleheader starting at 3.05 Eastern time tomorrow. Maybe the tarp was on strike, you know? Maybe they oh, my gosh, I didn't think of that. You know, sometimes the tarp doesn't cooperate. Just ask Vince Coleman. Yeah. This guy's good. Tony Watson, boys liked him. Back to his days when he was with the Pirates. Can work a lot, as you see. 288 ERA. Jammed Johan Camargo. Crawford slipped as he fielded that ball, but stayed with it. Made a nice play. And Camargo gets the ball on the ground, but unfortunately, he's 0 for 4 tonight. And here's Freddie. Freddie always seems to be one of the guys up in the inning when Watson comes in. He's faced him 10 times before. Two for 10, three strikeouts. This guy side arming, good slider, tough on lefties. Good night for Freddie. Two hits and one of the two Atlanta runs. And he's demonstrated here. Yeah, those <laughs> cut swings that yeah. Mr. Watson generates. Mm -hmm. He's good. Out of play. It's nothing at two. Both of his hits tonight to left field. Long double to left over the glove of Hunter Pence and then beating the shift with a just a soft line drive over that way. But especially with a tough lefty like this up there, I'm a little surprised they're still shifting him as drastically as they are. Let's see if Freddie can beat it. One ball, two strikes. Not that time, a swing and a miss. Watson's gotten the first two Braves hitters. And now Nick Markakis will be the last hope of the Atlanta eighth. No mystery there. Just a good pitch. Yeah. He's he's a real good. Matchup guy. That's what I was looking for. Matchup guy, especially with the lefties. Ground ball toward Belt at first. He'll take it to the bag, and it was an elementary inning for Mr. Watson. <laughs> three up, three down. Bottom part of the order up for the Giants. It's still a 2 1 Atlanta game. This foul ball. This young lady up there in the stands had it. Oh, well, you'll never get another chance. Never in a million, thousand, hundred. Are you kidding me? What? No, this was not an instant replay. It went right back to that girl, and she caught it this time. And then started dogging all the people down below she her. Like, was you're all not, over her. Like you're not going to get another one. <laughs> she was killing them. Yeah. <laughs> wow, that is awesome. That is so amazing. 
Uh, Joe Panic is going to be announced as the pinch hitter for Kelby Tomlinson. Once he's announced, Brian Snitker will march to the mound and bring on Johnny Venters in the eighth inning. Shane Carl threw seven pitches, got three outs. Fourteen straight Giants have been retired in a 2 1 game. You never know what you'll see in a big league ballpark. And that's the case at AT&T tonight. Park, you'll button up your personalized Braves uniform, lace up your cleats, and take the field like your favorite players. Sign up today at Braves.com slash Brave for a day. Johnny Venters, the third pitcher of the night. Shane Carl threw seven pitches in a scoreless inning. Chase Darno, a former Brave, will be brought to the batter's box. Joe Panic was announced and is burned by Bruce Boshi, so it'll be Darno, Hernandez, and then the pitcher spot. In the bottom of the eighth inning, Braves protecting a one run lead. Johnny issued a walk yesterday. That walk came around to score. And that was his first walk in about nine outings. To see Chase back in the big leagues with San Francisco. Very popular guy in the Braves clubhouse, still expanding his musical horizons. Very gifted guitar player, real friendly guy. Good baseball family. His brother Travis with the New York Mets. He missed the whole year with arm surgery. Round ball, Dansby's been busy. Stayed down, threw off target, and Darno tagged out on the slide at first. Fifteen straight Giants have been retired. Freddie says, sorry, Chase, didn't mean to tag you in the face on the way by, but business is business. One out. That's when Johnny's at his best. He gets that sinker working, gets a lot of ground ball outs. Now he'll tangle with Gorky's Hernandez, the only giant to score. That came in the third inning. San Fran led 1 0. Braves answered with a run in the fourth and picked up another one in the seventh. The chance at short. Dansby, better throw this time, two out. Boy, he's been busy. He has had a hand in the last six outs, four ground outs. Excuse me, five ground outs and a pop out for the Braves shortstop. And six of the last eight. Wow, very busy night. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight assists for Dansby Swanson at shortstop. This is Aramis Garcia. Not the one you're familiar with in Atlanta. No, I had to look just to make sure. Mm -hmm. A four-game hit streak for Garcia, who's a catcher by trade. 
Made his major league debut against the Mets on August 31st. His first career hit, a solo home run. And he's an interesting case study. It will be fascinating to see what the Giants do with Buster Posey going forward after coming back from the hip surgery. He can play first base. They've got Brandon Belt. Belt can play the outfield, but can he play it well enough in his home park? The Giants, as you know, drafted Joey Bart from Georgia Tech with their number one pick this year. And he's off to a terrific start in his minor league career. They've had pretty good luck with drafting catchers in the first round, haven't yeah. they? Hoping Bart follows the same path as Buster Posey somehow, some way. One ball, two strikes. Swing and a miss. A guy named Bart has to be a success at San Fran, wouldn't you think? Yeah. 17 up, 17 down for the Braves staff. We go to the ninth looking for a little insurance. It's 2 1 Atlanta after eight. a lot recently. Well, I have some good and some bad news on the rehab front for you. I'm going to knock out the bad news first. Jose Ramirez has been shut down for the year. It was a possibility that he would come back. But now for the good news. Arodis Vizcaino is going to throw a side session in Atlanta tomorrow, and the Braves expect to activate him on Friday, and he will be good to go. And you look at the numbers that he was able to put up in the first few months of the season. A 165 ERA in 33 games. He had 15 saves out of 17 opportunities so you guys if they can get a Rodas Vizcaino back after working him in gently it'll be a huge boost for this bullpen another fresh arm and Joe an experienced arm yeah it, it, that would really be a big a big boost for them down there so Hunter Strickland's the new pitcher for the Giants his 43rd game he's got Suzuki and Ciarte and Albies coming up Braves lead two to one trying to pick up their first win of the year against the Giants Atlanta 20 and 12 in one run games this year. The Giants 24 and 26. They have played 50 one run games this season. Big night for Kurt Suzuki. A couple of singles, a walk, and an RBI. That 50 one run game total for the Giants is the most in the National League. This guy Strickland leads their team in saves with 14. Hard thrower. Mid 90s. It's obviously not a save situation. He's going to try to hold the Braves right mm -hmm. here. But heck Joe they've lost nine to ten games. He hasn't had many chances to no. pick up saves. No he hasn't. He's the guy that got in the fist of cups last year with Bryce Harper. And then it took about three teammates to drag him to the dugout. Two balls, one strike. Nasty pitch at 95. AJ Minters up in the Braves bullpen. The top of the San Francisco order is scheduled in the ninth inning. 
Another run or two wouldn't hurt. Ninth inning was awfully kind to the Braves in Phoenix yesterday. They scored six times. The last six wins for the Braves have been thanks to last at bat heroics. A little less drama would be just fine, I'm sure, for that man. You know it. Braves have scored 240 runs in the seventh inning or later now, including one tonight. 3 2 pitch. Didn't mean to, and out at the plate. This game's moved along so briskly, the Seagulls aren't here yet. Kind of surprised by that. They would have starved to death in Phoenix. <laughs> as long as those games were, they'd have been hit. <laughs> they showed up on time and they had to wait for three hours. Dive bombing yeah. the field from exhaustion, right? right? right. Uh, I'm not hanging around for this. Game's lasting too long. Three balls, two strikes. Swing and a high fly ball to deep left. Pence on the run at the warning track. It's off the wall. It's off Gorkis Hernandez as well. Suzuki will stop at second. Any other park, that's out of here. Instead, it's a leadoff double and a hard earned double at that. A three for three night for Kurt Suzuki. You'll give way to Lane Adams for a pinch runner, but I thought this was out of the ballpark. Another launch job by Suzuki. And it almost took Hernandez's head off coming off the wall. And oh man, is he swinging the bat. Three hits tonight. And a walk as well, and a big insurance run in scoring position for Atlanta in the ninth. Lane Adams. A blazing fast runner at second base for Ender. Same situation applies for Ender as it did Marcakis in the fourth inning. Get him to third base with nobody out. And he's going to do exactly that. Darno with the peg to first. Good at bat by Ender. Beautiful. Just, a, just so great to see how this team is executing. You've covered playoff baseball with the Braves and for the network a long time Joe I don't know if you can understate how important outs like that are. That's why I harp on it. Uh, this is the postseason already it seems like for the Braves because of the importance of these games. And you've got to be conditioned you've got to understand that that's what you have to do. Infield in for Ozzy. And he strokes one to deep right center field. That's out toward that triangle. It's over Slater's head. It's up off the wall. Ozzy around second, flying for third. He's going to belly flop in with a triple. And Atlanta extends the lead. If that relay throws mishandled, Ozzy's got a chance to come all the way home. That's the best ball he's hit in a month. And I mean, he touched it off. This hard thrower delivered one down, deepest part of the ballpark. And really a nice play by Hernandez off the wall to get it in quickly. There's another one, any other part of the ballpark, it's a home run. So a double and a triple for Atlanta makes it three to one. And now Dansby Swanson can pick up his second RBI with a fly ball. Did you say something about extra base hits in the ninth inning again? I did, didn't I? Mm -hmm. Three homers in the ninth last night. A double and a triple tonight. Braves have always saved their best for the last three innings. That is what's made this team so compelling and fun and exciting to watch. If this keeps up, Lane Adams is going to lead the team in runs scored in the month of September. <laughs> but that's, I think, another thing that makes this team so interesting to think about as we inch toward a playoff spot. First, the 0 1 pitch. What does it say about a club's offense? 
that can score this many runs against the setup guys and closers in the mm -hmm. major leagues and seemingly does it at will. Yeah the hard throwers they're taking it to him. Bottom of the order. Has done a good job tonight again. One ball one strike for Swanson more action in the Giants bullpen as Strickland turns it loose. It's a butt. It's a beauty. It's a race to the first base bag and Swanson brings home Albies with a sacrifice. How about that. I'll guarantee you the old skippers at home clapping on that one. Bobby Cox is loving that. Again awesome execution. Didn't try to be too fine with it just get it in fair territory. Great timing by Ozzy. He didn't give it away. Safety squeeze executed to perfection. Well done. A two RBI night for Swanson that gives him 57 on the year and Lucas Duda will try to stay sharp. He certainly was in the ninth inning yesterday. A 417 foot home run. One of three the Braves hit. One ball no strikes for Lucas Duda. This is as sound an offensive game the Braves have played from a fundamental standpoint in a couple of weeks. He only had one hit through three innings. And then Freddie let off of that base hit in the fourth and things started clicking. Had not seen Derek Rodriguez before. Second time through the order. And he started figuring some things out. Looks like A.J. Minter is going to have at least a three run lead to play with entering the bottom of the ninth inning. 17 straight Giants hitters have been set down. San Francisco with just three hits in the game. And a pitch. Three balls and a strike. Suzuki started it with a double. Albies tripled him home. Swanson with a bunt scored Albies. Beautiful ABC baseball. That's turned on and hammered foul. That'll bounce into right field. Slater will have to pick that up. These are important at bats for Lucas Duda. This will be his role down the stretch for Atlanta. Most closers are right handed. Guys like Duda that can come in and change the game with one swing in a playoff series. Think Eric Hinsky are mm -hmm. so valuable. It's a great comparison. Three balls two strikes. And Duda takes a walk. So it's not been a fun ninth inning for Strickland. It's the third Braves batter to reach. And Ronald Acuna Jr. is going to come up. He's walked in four trips to the plate. This score holds. The Braves will start action tomorrow. Five up in the division. The Phillies and Nats have a doubleheader tomorrow. Round ball hit toward Crawford. He'll shovel to Darno, and that will retire the side. Braves wanted insurance. They got it. Two extra base hits and a perfect bunt makes it 4-1 to the bottom of the ninth. Atlanta Braves baseball is brought to you by Xfinity. Xfinity delivers the fastest internet with the best in-home Wi-Fi experience. And by Delta Airlines.
of the ninth. Visit your nearest Advance Auto Parts store to get the quality parts you want from people that know a lot about them. Tyler Flowers will work behind the plate. A.J. Minter will work from the mound. He's looking for save number 14. He's got the biggest lead possible. Three runs heading to the night. It's great to have him out there tonight. He's given up runs in each of his last two outings. He was on the mound when Danzig made the great play to save the game a couple of nights ago. But it's still a save situation. Be nice to get a good one, two, three inning under his belt. The Braves have seen plenty of those from Newcomb, Carl, and Johnny Venters. The Braves have retired 17 consecutive Giants hitters dating back to the third inning. Slater drove in the San Francisco run with a drawn in infield a high hopper over the head of Johan Camargo they brought home Gorky's Hernandez to make it one nothing Giants haven't been heard from offensively since. One ball one strike. That's foul at third it's one and two. Fastball cutter the combination for Minter. He's got a big lead. Don't walk people. Is the key tonight. So far the Braves have not walked a Giants batter in this game. Nobody. One two pitch is out of play. After that pitch down and away. Fastball. Maybe a good time here with a one and two count to throw that backdoor cutter and make him think that it's not going to come back. He's got the outer half covered, but he might give up on it. Tyler wants it inside. And popped out of play. The reason I mentioned that zero walk number. Four games in Phoenix, the Braves walked 31 hitters. Oh. So, a on a refreshing night, yeah. that stat is a refreshing change for the pitching staff. I'm not a kidding. Man, oh man. One ball, two strikes, nobody on or out in the bottom of the ninth. The pitch. Swing and a miss. There's the cutter. Mm -hmm. Slater strikes out for the second time. Ten Giants have whiffed in the game. And there's out number one. That is a biter. Ooh. It almost looked like a slider chip as opposed to his cutter because of the big movement on it. They look so similar. Yeah, they do. Whatever the pitch, the result, the one AJ wanted, a swing and a miss. Here's mm -hmm. Belt. He's got one of the three San Francisco hits. A soft single to left against Newcomb in the first. Game two is here tomorrow night. Hope you'll join us for that. Mike Fultonevich guns for his 11th win. Andrew Suarez, a left hander, is 6 and 10. He's been pretty good too, despite his record. I was impressed with Rodriguez tonight. Me too. Me too. Working both sides of the plate, working up and down. Had an excellent change up, showed a curveball later in the game. I thought he pitched real well. Two runs, one earned for Rodriguez in six and a third innings. Right now, he's the pitcher of record for San Francisco. One ball, one strike for Brandon Belt. That exploded away from the left hand hitter one and two. And on cue the Seagulls are starting to frolic. They've got a tough choice. 80,000 people across the bay or 30,000 uh -huh. here. Right. With the Raiders playing over at Oakland.
The one two pitch. Just missed. Yeah and they made an adjustment. They, I guess they made an incorrect count on the attendance. Instead of 39 plus there's 35 plus. There were about 4,000 people that called in and said we're not there tonight. <laughs> <laughs> two balls two strikes. The pitch. A strike three outside corner. What was that pitch? A little change up of some kind. It was a head scratcher for Bruce Boshi. Belt didn't expect that. That was breaking ball. And two strikeouts for Minter in the ninth. That same pitch basically that he struck out Slater on. Just in a little bit of a little bit different location. Nice. Final hope for the Giants is Evan Longoria. He is 0 for 3. And up and away, one ball, no strikes. Atlanta has retired the last 19 San Francisco hitters. Gloria made him throw a strike and A.J. did one and one. If the lead gets to five games for Atlanta it would be their largest divisional advantage of the year. The pitch lifted toward right Marquez retreats he's got room and the Braves have won it. A clean game, a well executed game offensively, and Joe, one of the best pitching performances in recent memory for Atlanta. The Braves retire the final 20 Giants in order. Newcomb wins his 12th. The Braves' bullpen, brilliant, and no walks at I, all. I can't think of a game where they have executed fundamentals any better than they did tonight. It was a joy to watch, moving runners over, getting them in. Ozzie Deacon the center fielder and suckering him into a play clutch hitting and outstanding pitching tonight was the story and one of the stories Ozzie Albies check out this play on Statcast AI powered by AWS exit velocity of 94 just a simple base hit up the middle but he made a huge turn Gorky's thought oh, I'll throw him out he rounded it too far well, Ozzie was hoping he would throw it to first he threw it in the dugout and Ozzie came and back later with a, a deep 100 right mile field. an hour exit velocity drive into the deepest part of the ballpark for an RBI.